many programmers does it take to set up a kitchen table? That is the question. I think it's stuck. You think it's stuck? What the oh. heck? Sliding that apart? Right. Don't mind if I do. There should be something in the middle. Yeah. What the? Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. After We've done long? it. How long has it been? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes of sitting here trying to figure out how to put it together for what? Just an extra 8 inches? Wow. 8 inches? That's what she said. You're a fag. So here's my dev setup. This is going to be my spot. There goes Falco's. Peter, you're going to be over there, right? Yeah, I got to get the chair. So we've got all of our stuff set up. Here's Peter over here. Stuff My yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Nope. I guess I have two pages. So? Oh. Yeah, we usually don't record dev videos this close together. One, because we're lazy, and two, because we don't usually work this much. But since the last video, we've done almost nothing but work on this game. And when I say mm. almost nothing, I mean that. Like, you guys watch this, and it's like, I don't know, usually they're like, they've been like 20 minutes, this last one was almost 50 minutes, you know? But those 50 minutes take us like two weeks of work just to show that off. Or like a month. But this time, I think we have more to show off than any, probably any three dev videos combined. Just put together, we have that much to show right now. Um, and the night hasn't even started. Oh yeah, we're serious about this. And so I do believe you're missing a Sticks concert with some chick to be here. And <laughs> Peter, what, what's up with you? Well, you know, sometimes you gotta take one for the team. Yeah, vagina and game development don't mix. The only thing you'll be boning tonight's the engine. <laughs> oh, damn! Well, I guess the moral here is that sometimes you just gotta go gay for the things you love. What?! So Douchebag here is going to explain to us a little more about Lua. Alright, so... Whoa, 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 hold on. Okay, what's the new Lua system and why are we using it? Okay, so the last video you saw that we were doing a bunch of uh, creative work with Lua. And one of the things that we wanted to do, or that Peter wanted to do, was a kind of soccer game where you have goals in Lua and you can score points and stuff. And he was supposed to make that. And then he came to me and he's like, how would I do this? And, you know, I'm like, Peter, you're dumb as hell. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you can't do it. So I realized he really couldn't make that the way we had Lua set up. I could not. Yeah, he's actually not dumb as hell for once. So I, I went back and I'm like, that big there's no way there's no way he could have done it using the system we had I had dreamed up. So I had to rewrite a bunch of it. And the reason being is this is how a typical Lua call is handled. I'll use the uh, example of NPC AI because that seems to be ever popular with uh, Lua scripters these days. It's pretty much three phases. You got your phase one. You're getting variables. X and Y, get NPC X, get NPC Y. So you've got your get shit. Then you're doing something... Oh. This is also a part of get shit. Then you're doing something with the, the values re you've retrieved from the engine. What are the zeros that you're passing? Uh, that is get NPC X, NPC number zero. Oh. That's just theoretical. I mean, this isn't exactly in the engine, okay. but... Example. So... Now you're saying if x is greater than 640 or less than 0, you're setting its velocity equal to its negative velocity. Pretty much you're so making the direction. walk back and forth on the screen. So you get your shit, now you do shit, since you have it. Then after that, after we've done something with the velocities, actually you'd want to update your x and y here, then you return your x and y back to the engine. Yep. So, lastly, you set shit. That's what Lua does. Get shit. It retrieves shit, 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 shit. It does shit, and then it sets shit. All the values it's manipulating, it's getting from the engine, and it's putting back. But what Peter wanted to do, his little soccer game doesn't exist in the engine. He's manipulating tiles and items and things. They're in the engine, but the actual concept 
of a soccer game it would be completely in Lua, like the scores and stuff. And the problem was that every time he was calling a script, it was, it was like, there was no persistent memory. If he wanted a way to keep track of scores, say a score 1 and a score 2 variable, he couldn't have done that. So what he needed was a persistent... I don't even know if I'm spelling that right. Persistent memory system. Or PMS for short. So, so Peter, you need PMS? Peter yeah. needs PMS. So I went off. I got you. And I was like, okay, we got to do something about Peter's menstruation. So <laughs> I, re I rewrote it. You ever, so you ever now, try a herbal beverage? An herbal concoction? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyway, so now you have, what I did is there's a main Lua state, which is a square, which is a square, and now for various things there are threads off that state, which are also squares. For uh, this example, we'll just say those are all NPCs, NPC, 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 um, that C looks just like an L. And we'll say there's a level one for some reason. And what it what they do is they get the state's globals. It's kind of like they inherit them, but they're not actually inheriting copies, so it's like inheriting static members, if you will. So they're getting copies of state's globals, which in this case would be the functions from the engine, the get and set NPC. They have that, but now they also have their own globals, which is what Peter needed. So now the thing is... You're not just calling a function every frame, leaving it, coming back at the function, leaving it. So all the memory is not lost. You actually have persisting memory. Uh, it's like the, the program is still there. So, for example, you have score 1 and score 2 equals 0. These are globals because they're not in a function. Now, let's say Peter's update looked like this. Update soccer. If player 1 does something to score, you're adding to player one score. If player 2 does something to score, you're adding to that. End of function. Now the main function we said we had that was calling every frame is different. Now it's its own infinite loop, so it's its own heartbeat, sort of like an engine. So what's the double hyphen? The double hyphen's a comment in Lua. That's unimportant. So now, while it's in this loop, it updates soccer. But what's different is when it's done, it yields. This yield just uh, calls Lua yield from C, C++. And it's an infinite loop, but when it hits this, it goes back to the engine, it updates all the stuff the engine does. The engine resumes back here, it comes back, it's still in this loop. So it does it again, yields, goes back to the engine, does it again. It's, it's like that. Except when it's yielding, everything in this state is exactly as it was. So if somebody scored this time and score 1 is now equal to 1, Lua comes here, it updates its crap, it goes back to the engine, the engine's done, the engine comes back, score one is still one. Because the state is exactly as it was before it yielded. It's just continuing execution. You understand what I'm saying? Definitely. So now we have a fix to Peter's bleeding vagina. You is educated. So, yep. how's your bleeding vagina feel? <laughs>